Is there not an entire section on this subject? I know yes. that I may have changed my mind in the meantime on that, so it's unfair. I may have I may have changed my mind about Mithra, for example. Is, is, your, is your book for sale about it? Yes, sir. What have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. Let me tell you, 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 there's so much stuff I wanted to talk about this week, and to break it down into just a few topics was really hard. Um, I probably should have done a midweek special episode, but I didn't um, because, you know, time and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> and I've been sick, so just be happy that my voice sounds as good as it does. Um, if you've been watching the videos the last few days, especially the uh, um, Persecuted Church Awareness Month videos, The Fifth Seal, um, I've been sounding rough, so right now I sound really, really good, surprisingly. So let's just hope that my voice holds up for uh, the next um, 20 minutes or so. So um, first off, I just gotta, I just gotta say I performed my 70th wedding this weekend, um, which is really cool. I, I did not realize that. Um, I did not realize. I didn't didn't realize I spoke so proper suddenly um, didn't realize I had done as many I knew I'd done a lot I thought I was somewhere around 45 50 somewhere in there um, and so as I, I printed out go through what I do is I, I just save all of my uh, wedding ceremonies that I've done in one file um, and I w going through and counting them and I was like well there's 69 in here and I'm saving number 70 um, which is really cool uh, over tw uh, how many years 20 almost 20 years of ministry um, 70 weddings so I'm, I'm blessed to have been part of so many of those um, most of those the overwhelming majority of those are still married so um, it is a huge blessing to be able to to be part of those so just was a celebration that I, I've done 70 weddings um, over the last 20 years so that was exciting but uh, we got to get into this um, we're going to talk about a couple of things uh, just some really crazy stuff that came out this week um, first of all let's just talk about a little bit of fake news this is from Snopes and uh, there an article came out uh, something came out about uh, an email I don't remember what it was exactly but this is just a screenshot from Snopes and the, the headline was the Democratic Party has tried to impeach every impeach every president every Republican president since Dwight D Eisenhower I'll learn how to read sooner or later um, and so as they go through and they're talking about all the presidents that have been attempted and articles of impeachment or impeachment impeachment excuse me, impeachment proceedings, my voice may sound good, obviously I can't control my mouth, um, article, or, uh, not articles of impeachment, and impeachment in, in processing and whatever, there's, there's terminology that I, I can't, uh, articles of impeachment, uh, were introduced, uh, I don't remember what the terminology Nancy Pelosi has said recently with the, with this current um, attempt to impeach Trump, uh, but she's used a, an interesting term. But here, they, they've deemed it as mostly false. Um, this again is Snopes. And then there, what's true? Articles of impeachment were introduced against five of the six Republican presidents who have served since Dwight D. Eisenhower. So, okay, so that hasn't tried to impeach every Republican president, only five out of the six. And how is that mostly false? I'm thinking that that's, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of percentage. That's... Um, more than 80% I'm trying to do math on the fly here and it's just not working for me um, more than 80% so 
that they have tried to or introduced articles of impeachment against. I would say by definition that that's mostly true. But then again, this is Snopes. Either they are just literally showing their bias, which does anybody doubt the bias of Snopes on on any issue anymore? Um, I mean, come on. They're fact-checking the Babylon Bee. I don't see any fact-checking going on against the Onion. Or uh, there's a couple, there's um, there's a military satire site. Um, can't remember what it is, but I've never seen them uh, fact-check them. They're only fact-checking the conservative Babylon Bee, which is a Christian-based satire site. But, I mean, here, I mean, this is, this is just, it doesn't get more ridiculous than this. You literally have put in a, in a, a two-inch uh, area here contradicting statements, mostly false. Articles of impeachment were introduced against five of the six. It's mostly true. Come on, Snopes. I mean, this is even just ridiculous for your standards. <laughs> and, you know, I tweeted this to uh, Kyle Mann and uh, Ethan Nicole from Babylon B. I was like, I think they're trying to, uh, Snopes is trying to cut in on your territory. I think they're trying to become a, a satire site themselves because this can't be real, can it? Can it? I mean, have we gotten that ridiculous in that we're just going to overlook reality and that much of a, and again, maybe impeachment against Trump is a, is a valid. I mean, he's not my favorite president. I didn't vote for him. I'm not a hundred percent convinced I'm going to vote for him in 2020 or in, yeah, in 2020, do the math. Um, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent convinced. I'm not a hundred percent behind the guy. I don't want to see him fail. I give him credit when he does something good and I will criticize him till the day is long when he does something wrong. Wait, I've got a master's dog episode coming out either tonight, depending on how much time I have to get it going or tomorrow. I am going to do a master's dog episode, uh, about Paula white who was just recently, she's, um, his, his spiritual advisor, and now she's been given some like official, official cabinet. I don't know if it's a cabinet position or just a White House staffer position, but she's like officially employed by the United States government as this time somewhere in Trump's administration, not just as a spiritual advisor. And you want to hear me go off on, on Trump's judgment and discernment and so on? Just wait. Because it's going to get real in just a little bit. So stay tuned for that. Look for the next episode of the Master's Dog. Master's Dog episode number 31. Uh, Paula White. Uh, false prophetess. Uh, heretic. The list goes on and on. Hashtag go home Paula White. So again, I'm not super duper Trump guy. But I mean... Whether or not it's valid, this is ridiculous. Yes, reality states, and no, not every president, but the Democrats have tried to come across up with some way to impeach almost, almost every single Republican president since Dwight D. Eisenhower. Because this is just the polarized the way our country is. If the man in the, in the Oval Office isn't who they want him to be, they're going to try to impeach him. Believe me, I guarantee you there were tons and tons of uh, Republican congressmen and senators who were threatening to impeach Obama and Carter. And they did impeach Clinton. You know, so again, this is the divide in our country. And anytime you have Democrats and a, a, a Republican in the pres, in the uh, Oval Office, whenever you have it, you're going to have Democratic senators and congressmen who are making statements about impeaching that man. And it doesn't matter what they do. 
they're going to try to find some way to do it. And vice versa, you're going to get Republicans and so on that are going to try to find ways to impeach whenever there's a Democrat in the office. And, and that is just the, the polarization of our political atmosphere today. And it's been growing and growing and growing, and it's worse. It is far worse than it's ever been. And stuff like this, sites that are supposed to be claimed to be non-biased and so on. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if Snopes really claims to be unbiased. It's obviously not. There's, there, I mean, no one would mistake the, the Sno Snopes for an unbiased uh, website. But stuff like this doesn't help the polarization in our political atmosphere. It doesn't. This is ridiculous. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And it just just like this really it, are you that, you know, obtuse? <laughs> it, ridiculous. Really ridiculous. So there I've I've said my piece about that. Um and now Josh Harris is back in the news. He's back in the spotlight. Apparently he did an interview with HBO and um, now he's coming out and he's talking about stuff. And there's a couple of clips I want to show you. And I'm going to I'm gonna let these two clips play and then we'll kind of discuss them as we get into it. But um, these two clips, one establishes the, the foundation of what I'm going to talk about in the second clip. So we're going to, I'm not sure how the sound is going to work on this. We may get... Uh, double sound on on this as it's coming through um i apologize this is the first time i've i've used this aspect of the software that i'm using for my my podcasting so this is going to be trial and error so as we listen to it you might get a little bit of reverb or kind of reverbish sound you may get an echo we'll put it like that but let's see as a very young man, you wrote a book, wrote a book that sold a million, million copies. Mm. Yeah, it was called yeah, it was I Kissed Dating, Dating Goodbye, and that got a lot, of, got attention a lot of attention because it was a, a radical idea. We shouldn't just not have sex. We should stop dating because dating is leading to us uh, making these mistakes. So the first time you kissed your wife was? At the altar, yeah. I got married uh, about a year and a half after that book was released, and then dove into being a pastor and pastored a church for uh for 17 years i was a pastor there and then this summer you went on instagram and said essentially i don't believe mm. by all the measurements that i have for defining a christian mm. i'm not a christian what do you mean by that i was really just trying to be honest about the fact that all the ways that i had defined faith and Christianity, that I was no longer choosing to live according to those. Most significantly, the decision that my wife and I made to end our marriage. Some people were angry. A lot of people were angry, understandably. Why understandably? Because I was a leader and a spokesman, and I called people to live in very particular ways, to sacrifice in very particular ways. And so for me to change in my thinking uh, feels like a betrayal to them. You know, Mike, you know, as a pastor, as a pastor I, I, I excommunicated I people. <laughs> if you're not living according to the teaching of the Bible and you're living in unrepentant sin, then you have to be put out of the church. And I think I came to a point of recognizing, you know what, I'm not living according to this. And I held other people to this standard and, you know, I excommunicated myself essentially. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. So we've established at this point, Joshua Harris does no longer considers himself to be a Christian. He, he just said he excommunicated, excommunicated himself essentially. He has stepped outside of what he would consider, he said, by every measurable standard, I can measure what a Christian is. I am not a Christian. So he has walked away from the faith. He is apostatized. Um, he is is not a believer. He is uh, he's a non-believer. 
He is outside of orthodoxy. He is not a believer in Christ. He is not saved. I'll go on and on and on with with descriptives. He is no longer an evangelical leader. He is no longer even an evangelical. He is, I don't know if he's agnostic, if he's atheist. I don't know what he is. But he has, is absolutely maintaining the fact that he is not an evangelical. He is not a Christian. And now that leads me again. We're, get, we're staying kind of on the whole um, political Trump train here. Not the Trump train, but the Trump train. You know what I'm saying? Um, so now here's, here's a, a, another excerpt from this where he is talking about Trump and evangelicals. And this is what I want to get to. And this is what I want to talk about. And I'm actually kind of bummed. I listened to part of uh, Cross Politic earlier tonight. And everything I'm about to say, Toby Sumter said, probably said it better than I am. I'm going to. But uh, I plan to talk about it before I heard that. And I wasn't going to change my mind just because Toby said it better. Um, yeah. I'm still going to talk about what I plan to talk about. So let's play this clip. It sounds like you think the church has made a massive mistake by becoming so identified with President Trump. I think it's incredibly damaging to the gospel and to the church. And you give advice, you still give advice. Uh, how do they, how <laughs> still do they give advice? How do they <laughs> unwind that? What should they do? I don't think it's going to end well. And I think, you know, you look back at uh, you look back at the Old Testament and the relationship between the prophets and really bad leaders and kings. And oftentimes it was it's not something you unwind because it's, it's actually in the scriptures presented as God's judgment on the false religion of the day. You think Christians today who are embracing President Trump are due for a judgment? I think it is the judgment. I think it is part of the judgment. What, what do you mean by that? To have a leader like Trump, I think, is in itself part of, of the indictment that that this is the leader that you want and maybe deserve, that represents a lot of who you are. Okay, so a couple of things that I have an issue with on this statement. One, I don't think the, the church is that closely associated with Trump. I think the support of evangelicals is inflated I think the support for Trump from the church that, that is presented to the world is inflated. I don't think he has as much blind loyalty from Orthodox Christians as it's made out to, to seem. That's the first thing. I mean, again, the majority of the Christians I know are not just Trump cult. You know, they're not the Robert Jeffress or the um, Jerry Falwell Juniors or the Paula Whites or, uh, you know, these other people who are just Trump can do no wrong, uh, you know, Cheeto Jesus, uh, yes men for the president. That there's a, it's a very small minority of the church that is that, what's the word I'm looking for, um, brainwashed by this movement. I think there's a far greater, and, and again, this is anecdotal. This is my experience with Christians that I know. There's a far greater population of the evangelical church, of the, the Orthodox Protestant church in America that are standing back going, okay, Trump is doing some good stuff, and he's doing some ridiculous stuff. He's not... A Christian, not anything by any means that we would identify him as a Christian. But again, we've had other presidents that were not Christians that we didn't mandate our, our president be a Christian. Now, if he claims to be, I expect him to stand up to it, which is where Trump claims to be. And he doesn't live up to the, the requirements of a Christian or the guy, the 
I have to say this uh, very sensitively because it's not like you do. Again, Christianity is not a a faith, uh, belief in works. We don't. We aren't saved by what we do. But there are certain categories that are boxes that have to be able to be. We check those to prove that you are a Christian. One, first and foremost. You have to recognize the fact that you are a sinner in need of a savior and you have to be repentant, which Trump is not. There's no salvation without repentance. I can say that unequivocally. There is no salvation without repentance. So right there, Trump fails the test of being a Christian because he said he doesn't repent. He just doesn't need to because he doesn't do anything wrong. So why would I need to repent? I just, oh, if I make a mistake, I just try to do better. He, he's thinking that he can be saved by works. So he falls outside of orthodoxy. He's not a Christian. But that aside, it may be true. It may be true that Trump is a judgment on this country. I've said it since the, since the election in 2016. I, you know, it was the worst that we've ever seen where we had to choose the lesser of two evils or the evils of two lessers, as I like to say. I mean, it was bad enough when it was Obama and Romney. I had to say words that I never imagined that I would say. I voted for a Mormon because I did not want to see a second term of Obama. So I voted for Mitt Romney. Again, I was forced with the with the the choice of two candidates that I absolutely did not want. Wasn't real excited with the the Obama McCain matchup in excuse me, in the preceding in the two thousand eight election. Two thousand twelve I wasn't happy with. So when two thousand sixteen come around and we get a choice between Trump and Hillary I made it very clear. I'm sure there are podcasts we could go back and look at where I said the same thing. This is the judgment on America. The fact that we are faced with this choice is a judgment on, it's a, it's a, a a mark against the church and it's a judgment on this country. This is God's judgment on America. The fact that we have Donald Trump as a president, we have the president that we deserve. And you can, you can take that any way you want. But here is the big issue. I know, so yes, I agree with Josh Harris. So what's the problem? He, has, he, he does not get the, the privilege of speaking on behalf of the church anymore. You've already stated the fact that you are not a Christian, that you do not identify yourself as a Christian, and that you are not an evangelical. So... Get out of of the whole issue of addressing whether or not it's a bad thing for the church because you're not part of it. You know, you can have your opinions, you can have whatever, but you are no longer, you have removed yourself from this body of Christ. You have removed yourself from the church. You need to just join Beth Moore and Paula White and go home, Josh Harris. Go home. Because you're speaking on things that you have removed yourself from the privilege of speaking on those things. You want to repent and you want to come back and you want to be restored into the body of Christ. That's something that Christ offers. You can repent of your sin. You can repent of your divorce. You can repent of your denial of the faith. And you can come back. And you can be restored. And then you go ahead and start speaking on behalf of the church. But right now, no. That angers me. That that clip angered me. And that's why I had to talk about it. And I had to put it in in context with the other clip. Because it truly made me mad. Because here's a guy that says, Well, you know, I'm not part of the church anymore. I'm not a Christian. But here, let me answer your 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 questions about Christianity. Well, no, no. You want to know about what, what is Trump and his connection to the Christian church and what that effect has on the Christian church and so on. Ask a Christian. Don't ask Josh Harris, who has proclaimed himself to not be a Christian. 
Because now you're you stay in your lane, bro. That's my opinion on it. I could be wrong. Go ahead and hit me up in the comments and give me your worst. And and we'll go from there. But that's that is my my rant on Joshua Harris. And finally, Epstein didn't kill himself. Still didn't kill himself. So this week, ABC done lost their minds. Somebody leaked an open mic video of, I can't remember the lady's name, but her talking about the fact that ABC buried the story on Epstein three years ago. Three years ago, they apparently had everything they needed to have a story to talk about this guy witnesses that were willing to talk things that were willing to be said truths that were really willing to come out and they buried it abc news buried this because it didn't meet their 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 journalistic standards or whatever but apparently it was just because it, it, there was implications against prince prince andrew and they didn't want to have these implications because they wanted an interview with the royal couple kate and whoever that other not not Harry but his big brother and so they bear again this is something that makes me so angry because if this is true if this if they had this story and they could have released this thing how many people how many girls continued to be exploited and raped and brutalized by this man and the billionaires that he worked with in the three years while ABC sat on this story. Somebody should go to jail over at ABC because they aided and abetted a known, they apparently they knew somebody was like, he was going to be the most prolific pedophile known in America three years ago and ABC News aided and abetted in his ability to continue on because they sat on a story because they wanted an interview. This woman who knew this story continued to work there even though they buried it, knowing that women were still being molested and, and used and exploited and pick your, your terminology by this man and they buried her story and she continued to work there. I wish I knew your name because I'd look you in the camera and I'd look you in the eye right now and say, you need to repent. You owe so many people an apology. And, and, and that seems mild. Do you understand the magnitude of that? This man was abusing underage girls. And three years ago, apparently, ABC News had the story and they sat on it because it didn't meet journalistic standards? What does that even mean? Somebody at ABC News, whoever was in charge of suppressing the story, should go to jail. They should go to jail and then see if something, video cameras go bad and, and guards fall asleep. And they kill themselves. Right? Somebody should be punished. Justice should be served on the people at ABC News if they truly had that story. And th no one is denying it. They're just coming up with excuse after excuse after excuse to, to ease the, the minds of the people. <laughs> I, I hold no delusions that anybody at ABC News or anybody of any consequence um, that could bring about justice is going to watch this video. I have my 70 subscribers. I have my loyal uh, viewers, I hope you'll share and and be angry along with me. Um, I hope you'll share this or, or whatever. And I hope and pray that somehow 
This gets to somebody who can make something happen. But somebody at ABC News needs to, to be brought to justice because young women continued to be molested, exploited because ABC News did not have the courage to run a story about a pedophile. Three years ago, three years of molestation, three years of underage rape because ABC News There you have it. I'm speechless. And I, I can't think of anything else to say because it just, it my blood boils when I see this crap. Somebody sat on a story about this man for three years and allowed him to continue. They, they knew. They had evidence. They had witnesses that he was molesting underage girls and they sat on it. Who's going to go to jail for this? He already did. And he didn't kill himself. Somebody got to him. And then that's a whole other story in and of itself. I mean, right now, today in the news, they're coming out. There are people who are saying it was Trump. People who are saying it was, was the Clintons and da-da-da-da-da. And the argument is going on and on. It might as well have been both. It doesn't matter. Somebody got to this guy and put an end to him and silenced him. And I would think my personal conspiracy theory thoughts is the reason why ABC truly sat on this story is they didn't want to put it out there and have whoever was part of it be in danger themselves. Apparently, it's a bad thing to bring out the name of the Clintons involved in any kind of, of uh, messed up situation like this. Because apparently people have a habit of, of committing suicide after they've brought out evidence of, of wrongdoing on the part of the Clintons. I read that somewhere. I, I don't know how true it is. I don't know how much of it I buy into, but I firmly believe that something in that, in that frame of, of, of worldview is what happened to Jeffrey Epstein in that prison. I guarantee you that man did not kill himself. And everybody knows it. And I love the fact that memes are still going on and on and on show, to, to just show that people are not going to let this fall out of the news. They are not going to let this go away. We want to find out. We want to know what happened to Jeffrey Epstein, who was behind it. And I want to see somebody at ABC News brought to justice for sitting on this story and allowing countless numbers of young women to continue to be abused by this man. There's my thoughts on it. A little more heated than I usually get, a little more political. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's, it's along the same vein of political stuff that I usually do. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, just got a little heated, a little hot under the collar. Everything today just ticked me off. So um, there you have it. Uh, fake news, uh, false converts, uh, and Epstein didn't kill himself, and the evangelical norm is pissed. We'll just chalk it up to no quarter November, and uh, we'll let it go at that. Thanks, Doug Wilson, for, for giving me an outlet to just let her rip. And uh, God bless you, sir. And uh, as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They are necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm -hmm.